today. I am most grateful for such an opportunity. Wherever you are, I welcome you to Kingdom Television. This morning, I am here to bless you with all humility from the powers of above. Today, I just want to share a very brief sermon with you wherever you are watching me. And the purpose of this message is to encourage you and to let you know that there is a God. Hallelujah. We serve a living God, a God who is always a God, a God who does not fade out. And today I am here to encourage somebody to let you know that we serve a living God. I am speaking on a message I have entitled, Nothing Stays the Same. Nothing Stays the Same. Most of people have given up on God based on their current situation. And one of the things that marvels me is that people have now limited God based on what they're going through. This morning, I want you to understand that no matter what you are going through, we serve a God who can change the story or who can change your situation. Nothing stays the same. What so far you are going through this morning, I am here to encourage you and to let you understand that there is a God who can turn things around. There is a God who can pick you from nowhere and position you at a higher place. There is a God who can bring you from nothing and make you something. There is a God who can bring out the good for nothing in you and make you good for something. This morning, I want you to keep your faith in God. This morning, I want you to keep your trust in God. That no matter what you are going through, the God we serve can change things for your favor. I don't know what you are going through this morning. Some of you are going through so much that you, you even think that the existence of God is no more. Some of you are depressed based on what you are going through. I understand we have been there before. There are times we even ask God, God, do you exist? And if you exist, why are we going through all this? One thing that I've realized in life is until you go through certain things, you wouldn't understand the, how powerful God is. One day, something happened to me and when I came out, I then realized that my help is not in the hand of man. Sometimes, God I will have to close down every opportunity just for you to know that without him, without him, you can't have any other help from anybody. Situations come our way for us just to know that he is the only person that can help us come out from that situation. This morning, wherever you are, you are watching us on Kingdom TV, I want to encourage you and I want you to understand that God still exists. And no matter what you are going through, he is capable to still bring you out of it. I want us to look at something in the book of Numbers chapter 27. Something magnificent happened over there. And any time I read these scriptures, it reminds me of the power of God. I want to tell you a story before I proceed to that scripture. There was two young girls who had a father who was a bus driver. And one day, the father took these children on their way to school as usual. And on their way to school, there was a very serious incident that happened. What happened was that when the driver was on the way, on, the, on his way taking the children to school, the bus was full with students, with children. Then two ties at the front just came out. Everybody in the car was shouting, screaming, calling on God. Whilst these children of the father were at the back of the seat playing toy game. At the time, everybody was crying. At the time, everybody was screaming. These two children were playing toy game, were celebrating, were laughing. Now, when the car was able to come to standstill, one of the teachers went to the children and asked, why were you playing and laughing whilst everybody in the car was screaming and calling on God? Beloved, this was, this was the response from these two children. What these two children told the teacher was that, we know that our father knows that we are in the car. And our father knows, or we know that our father is the driver. And once our father is the driver, there is no way he will allow us to involve in any accident that will result in death. What were the children trying to say? What the children was trying to say is that even as human as they are, they believed in their father. As human as they are, they believed that their father knows that they are in the car. And there is no way their father 
will allow the car to involve in an accident that will cause their death. Beloved, what am I trying to say here? Many children are going to church or are Christian, but they don't even know who their God is. Until you know who your God is, you wouldn't know how powerful he is. When you begin to know that your God is powerful over every situation, you know that no matter what happens to you, no matter what you go through, one day, one day, you will come out of it. Then you will know that what you went through was just to give you a story or a testimony to share to others in order to be encouraged in the Lord. Nothing stays the same. You might be down today. Tomorrow, God will pick you there and position you at a different level. So whatever you are going through, allow that to make you think or feel that there is no God, that your God has forsaken you, that you will die in that problem. There is God. What I want you to understand that believe in your God. The first thing you need to understand, of course, the, the oil you don't believe does not work for you. And no matter how faithful you are as a Christian in attendance, if you don't believe in the power of God, God cannot do anything for you. For God will do something for his child only when he believes and has faith in, in him. Nothing stays the same. You might be down today, but that does not mean that that is the end of your life. You might have nothing today, but that doesn't mean that that is the end of your life. Beloved, whatever you are watching me for, let me tell you this. If you don't believe how far God can take you, just sit down quietly and think of how far God has brought you. If you don't believe that things can change to your favor, let me tell you this. Take a picture of five years ago and compare it to your current picture. You will then realize that God has been faithful to your life. We look at who we who we used to be. We were nobody. They called us names. We went through storms, challenges that made, even, that made us even felt that there is no God. We at the point felt that we, are, we, we, we have come to the wrong place. The other day I was telling my, my, my students that you go through certain challenges and you begin to accept. God, is it true you have called me? Nothing stays the same. Of course, Tomorrow, today comes, but tomorrow will always come. I was telling my students that even in the spelling of today, we have only one O, and the O in it stands for opportunity. Which means that when we are spelling tomorrow, we have three O in tomorrow. Which means that when even you lose the opportunity today, tomorrow will always come. So when you lose something today, it doesn't mean that that is the end of your life. More opportunities will come. The only thing you need to believe is that the God you serve is not dead. And he is capable to do all things. The Bible says something in the book of Numbers chapter 27. And I love that. And I want to, you know, relate it with character in order for us to get close to our blessings. The Bible, one day, three women got up and said, there has been a law of the land which is affecting everybody. This law is affecting people who are innocent. So these three ladies said to themselves, we will not allow this law to affect us. Now, when you look at where that law was coming from, it was not just an easy thing for somebody to just rise up in a day or in, in, in some years to even change that law. Moses was a spokesperson to God. And this law came from God. This lady said, no way, we will not allow this law to affect us. What was the law? The law was that if any man dies and do not give birth to male children, his properties must be sold to outside world, no matter the female children or whoever the, the, the man left behind. Now, what did this lady say? No, we will not accept that law. This, this law to affect us. What happened? Now, Moses was a spokesperson. When you go to the parliament house of Kenya, this is how it rules. We have so many bodies. One person do not just make a law. Sometimes before a law is passed, the president must approve. So we have the parliamentarians, we have the legislature, we, we have so many institutions that has to make sure that whatever decision that has been taken has, has been assessed by them. So going to Moses for something to be changed was not an easy task. But do you know what? With perseverance, with, de with determination, this woman said, no way. 
so long as this law must, does not benefit us, it needs to change. This needs to change because this does not favor us. Now, out of boldness, this woman rise up, went to Moses. The Bible said they went to Moses at the tent and they said to Moses, Moses, we understand you are the spokesperson of Jesus or of God, but this particular law does not favor us. We disagree and it must change. Then Moses looked at them and said, do you know what you are talking about? When you, when, when you look at it from the theological perspective, you realize that it is not an easy task. Moses now have to consult people. This is what this lady has come forward with. They now have to deliberate on it. Think about it. Now, before even accepting, because this law was not made by any of them, how do we go to God? To tell God that God, the law you gave us must be changed. Because there are some family, some children of this person's uh, 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 father saying that they disagree with that law. They believe that this must not always be the same. And they, they, in fact, there needs to be a change. The Bible said, Moses took their issue to the law. I am telling somebody this morning. No matter what you are going through, you see, your success is in your hands. Your growth is in your hands. Nobody will work it out for you if you don't rise to fight it. So the people, the children of Zarephath realize that, look, things must change. We are sick and tired of living in this kind of calamity. These rules must change to our favor. Somebody watching me, I prophesize over your life. If you will rise on your to change anything that is not bringing God's glory over your life, I speak the power of God will turn things around your life for people to know that you serve a living God. Let me tell you, the reason why people does not even believe in your God is because you yourself is reluctant. You are too weak. You are reluctant. You don't even believe that God can bring you out of that situation. You have accepted to be in it. Let me tell you something. Success begins from the mind. And so the Bible says, as a man thinks, so he so before you can be successful, before you can change any negative, you know, occurrence in your life, it has to first begin from your mind. Once you accept that I am not okay with these issues, so things will begin to change in your life. Once you change your mind, you need to put that thing into action. Hallelujah. You must put, you know, whatever decision into action. So there is a saying that dreams becomes a goal. When is taking towards its achievement. Anything you decide to achieve, you need to work, move with action towards it in order to gain achievement. What, what happened? Bible said, when this lady realized that this is not, or this must not be our original state, why should our father have so much properties? He did not offend the Lord. He was right before God. Why must this law affect us? The second thing they did is that after renewing their mind of thinking or of agreeing that the law must change they did what they did was that they they made they, they, they made a step that was the action aspect as a christian reluctance will not bring you blessings you can't sit down to fold your arms thinking that manna will come from heaven to release you from that kind of poverty or that stress you are going through they went to Moses and said to Moses, Moses, we understand this law came from God. But listen, these rules must change. There needs to be an amendment. I prophesied over somebody's life. Wherever amendment is needed in your life, may it fall on you in the name of Jesus. They said there needs to be an amendment. I understand. Every, in every constitution, there is a portion of amendment because what happened is that as, as the, the year comes back, we move into generations and in era. So probably you made a decision or a law in this era which favors the people in this era. But in the era to come, it will not favor us. So there needs to be an amendment. They went to the, the senior man. They went to Moses and his people. The Moses, we are not here to disrespect you. We are not here to, to disrespect the rules of God. But this is what it is. Go to God. Tell God that these rules must change. 
In fact, people must see God's glory through our life. It's a sin. It's a mistake for us to look poor whilst our father has left such an inheritance. Moses said, I will take your, your issues to God. And indeed, Moses took his issues to God. Now, reading from the Bible perspective, you may think it's an easy task. It wasn't an easy task. How was Moses going to convince God? Even the, the, the people Moses was working with, the elders, the judiciary, the legislature, the lawmakers, who are that? Who, who are they? Who are these ladies to come to God, a whole God, to tell God that you must change this story? What it means here is that anytime you make an effort, it brings a change. God deals with people who are serious. God blesses people who are determined. God will not bless somebody who is reluctant. What happened when they took their case to Moses? The Bible said Moses took their case to God. And the Bible said, Moses came back, called them. He said, the Lord said, he has heard your petition. The Lord said, from today, we should change this story. And from today, there will be a law that if any man dies without having male children, his properties should be given to us, should be transferred to his female children. Hallelujah. I am telling somebody watching me this morning, that whatever you are watching me, whichever country you are watching me, it may be in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening. What I want you to understand is that you can change the story by these three things. One, having a renewal of mind. Everybody is born in a particular family. And in every family, there are what we call a transfigurational bloodline. What it means is that, scientifically, when a man gives birth to a child, the child inherits the chromosomes and the autosomes of that of their parents. What are the autosomes? They are the characteristics that define or give them the same resemblance of their parents. What it means is that, basically, that chromosomes are shared on 20 to 24%, 24% basis. So when you are given birth by parents, it is likely to inherit either the, the, the characteristics of your father or of your mother. So you realize that when a child is born and begins to live certain character, people can look at him or her and say, you, the same character your father is living is exactly what you are living because he is living in the characteristics of his parents. That is why when a child is born and the father tries to deny that child, they say, let's conduct what we call a DNA test. It is what will identify whether the child is of the father or not. So, physically, scientifically, when a child is born, you automatically inherit the characteristics or the properties from your father through your bloodline. Hallelujah. Now, if there is an inheritance in the bloodline, then there should be an inheritance in the physical. So, these children realize that, no, this is our DNA. And if he had become a problem, we would definitely have to suffer because he is our bloodline. How then do you tell us that Jesus Christ has come to die for us, yet we are suffering the bloodline of our parents? Hallelujah. So the children realize that, no, we must not suffer the bloodline of our parents. What is the bloodline? The bloodline is that if you are born of a particular children, whatever they went through, it is likely you will go through it. So, when you, when you look at the genealogy of Abraham, most of the things Abraham went through, his children went through the same thing. So, we are talking of what? The, 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 the bloodline. The bloodline. Now, if the bloodline of our father has given us properties, why then do we become poor? Hallelujah. If the transfigurational system has given us blessing, why then... The, means there's an error you look at yourself and then look at what we are going through now one of the most beautiful thing is that let me give you this revelation yes we understand that we may inherit the bloodline of our family but this is you know in the olden days there's what we call the tabernacle and in the tabernacle we have what we call the holiest place and the holiest of holiest in the holiest of holiest nobody goes there because the only person that can go there is appointed by God. And even as he enters, 
he has this kind of bells around his wrist. So when he dies, nobody dare enter. This is the rules. Which means that nobody can enter that place for any reason. Okay. The blood is talking about inheriting things of our parents. Thank God that Jesus Christ has died for us. Unlike the sacrifices we did in the tabernacle. In the olden days, we killed cows and bulls for sacrifices and for, 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 for forgiveness, for cleansing. Bible said Jesus Christ has come to die for us with his blood. Therefore, we don't need to go use cows and other animals for sacrifices. Which means that the blood of Jesus is powerful than that of cows and animals. So now, if Jesus Christ has come to die for us, which means that now we are no more in possession of any earthly inheritance. The evil blood lines of our parents have been cleansed off. Now, if it has been cleansed off, why then do we have to still remember what our father built for us? There was an error. They, they thought of all those things. He said, if our father did not build, it's a different matter. But what he has built, it means we are not inheriting poverty. Moses go to God to tell him that there's a mistake. Go to God and remind God that the words of his own words are not being fulfilled. This is not arrogant. Sometimes, you have to rise up as a person. Because until you fight it, like I said, nobody will fight it for you. They stood and said that we will fight this. We will fight our blessings. Which means that no matter who gave birth to you, now the blood of Jesus has come to be more powerful for us not to inherit anything, any curse, any mess from our parents. No matter their are, they are blood group or their bloodline. That is why some of us you see our parents doing so many evil things, yet we are no more inheritance of their blood because we've been saved by a blood powerful than the, the, the blood of our family. It takes you to say no way even though I was born poor but it doesn't mean I must be a poor. Even though I was born into a poor family I was born nothing but it doesn't mean I, I must be nothing. God has come to die with his blood which has changed the what? The ideology and the system and the so-called inheritance from your parents. So, you are not an inheritance of those blood lines. For Christ has come to die for you. I came to bless somebody this morning. And I know that your life is being transformed. Nothing stays the same. But for you to change the story, it takes you. Just change, have a mind change, a mindset, a mind of I can do it. Just rise up, take action, take bold, bold decisions, and live in, 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 in perseverance. Tell yourself, no matter what it will cost me, I will get there. May the mighty bless you. May he strengthen you. It is my prayer that you'll be catapulted from nothing to something. From today, the Lord is changing your story. The Lord is repositioning you. The Lord is bringing restoration to wherever restoration is deserved in your life. If you are praying for marriage, I pray, may God open marital door for you. In the year 2024, I speak prophetically over your life. Your life will never and ever remain the same. For something is going to be changed. The way the team is, nothing remains the same. As you rise up in your, in your feet, as you make a step, may any unchangeable thing in your life begin to change for better in the name of Jesus. May the Lord Almighty bless you, restore you, reposition you, and give you the grace you deserve in the name of Jesus. My name is Bishop Dr. Richard of Ghana. I am the founder of Excellence Theological Seminary Worldwide. I'm currently in Kenya for leadership conference. Wherever you are watching me from, I'll be more, most grateful to have you. We are at Greenfield Mall. When you get to Greenfield Mall, yes, you, you'll find us there, House of Comfort. You'll see us there. A lot of ministers are coming, are being impacted. And I know that once you come, your life will also not remain the same. I want to thank Kingdom TV for such an opportunity. I don't take it lightly. All the staff, the senior, the engineers, may the Lord Almighty bless you. And I pray that the Lord establish this television for the, the mindset behind it. I pray that God connect them to more sponsorship and it goes over the world for the purpose of expanding the work of God. Thank you so much and God bless you. Stay blessed.